So here it is, as a congregation now, we're about to enter Holy Week. It is a highlight of our year together. It, it, it's not just the ancient practice of the week, it's, it's that it gather, it just, there's this sense and energy around us telling this story. I like that you said ancient because it always seems to me during Holy Week, suddenly First Plymouth goes ancient. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no. it goes historical. We, <laughs> yes. we have not only, of course, reenact the Palm Sunday processional like the church has done for 1,500 years, years at least. Or, yeah. um, but also then we do the Maundy Thursday yeah. uh, very lushly and the Good Friday is yes. so dark and the Holy Saturday vigil. I mean, we do the whole walk. We do the whole walk. And, and at every step of the way, it's a hope that somewhere in us retelling the story, all of us might have an opportunity to encounter Jesus. Yeah, if we tell the story, we become the story. And, and that's part of what gets my attention on a week like this. You know, so often in the church, we find ourselves, we, we hear, we come to church and we hear the story of Jesus. It can become so mundane. So all of a sudden in Holy Week, everything stops and the great drama of, of the life of Jesus comes before us. Uh, you have, uh, you have a, a crowd that welcomes Jesus as a savior and king, and, and, and then pretty quickly, I mean, it seems like, like immediately almost, they go from that celebration to saying, crucify him. Uh, you, you have the church slowing down enough to remember little details of the Jesus story about a, a, a Christ who bows down and washes feet and tell, tells us, love one another. Uh, and, and, then, and, then, and then about a, a Christ who finds themselves in a situation like so many humans in our day, a situation of struggle and oppression. He, he is bound and arrested. Maybe you know someone who is incarcerated right now. Jesus knows what that feels like. And then he suffers. Some say along the suffering of all the world, this God knows suffering. And then there's this pause. Wow. The whole world stops. Disciples go away. Some of them go back to their day-to-day -day lives. They think it's over. And then suddenly, seemingly out of nowhere, new life comes. Uh, Forgiveness takes place, uh, life comes again. And, and so for me this week, it's all about being fully present to the day-to-day -day movements of the Holy Spirit in me. It, it's truly the springing forth uh, from the difficulty of winter into the beauty of spring. It, it, it is really a, a, a whole kind of cadence of the story of Jesus. In, 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 in one short number of days, the whole life, death, and resurrection, we encapsulate in one week the whole story of the gospel. So my hope for our people, uh, for all of you, <laughs> this week is that you find yourselves engaged in some way in this beautiful rhythm of life, engaged in the story, rooted in, in, in who you are, and seeing God all around you uh, emerging, new life emerging, forgiveness emerging, possibility emerging, imagination emerging, knowing that, that part of what Christ has given us, part of the good news, is that we're freed and restored and renewed deep within our bones and reconnected to one another. That's Holy Week for me, and I kind of celebrate it. Yeah, each one of us has to connect personally. How can a story be that beautiful and that ugly, or that intense and that peaceful, and the contradictions and the depth? <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. right. It's a, it's a both and. Uh, uh, we live in it together uh, at, at the same time in one week. Yeah. You know, it seems to me also the story is so intensely theological. There's so many theological truths and metaphysical realities that are portrayed in this story, but it's so human at the same time, a deeply human story. When I think of this week, it moves from humility 
to love, to suffering, to joy. Is there anything more human than that collection? Humility. We each have to find our way to be that humble person. As a follower of Christ, he said, don't take the seat at the head of the table. Don't strive to be first. He, he keeps talking about a, a deep humility and that image of him coming on a donkey is so vivid. And, and he's not just humble. You can't help but look ridiculous when you ride a donkey bouncing around and you can't, there's no saddle and you never look, you never look like right, that you're riding a stallion perfectly in place. And so here we have this humble savior. What a vision. And why aren't Christians more humble? That's our image. But it feels like oftentimes Christians are the opposite of humble. It's, we think we're the one true religion or, or we're triumphalist in our proclamations. We're to follow in his way, humility, but striving for humility as a human being, then the weak moves us to love, of course. And you have to find love in your life. Monday, Thursday, when he says, love one another as I have loved you. You have to find someone to love. You have to be loved. In fact, then it's on Monday, Thursday. Remember, that ultimate commandment goes right to the essence of our faith. Religion is about love so that you can grow in love, so that we can all grow in love. It's all about love, humility to love. And then on Good Friday, suffering. Is there anything more true about our lives that we suffer? Is there anything more real? And that Jesus on the cross can remind us in our suffering, he's with us. There will be suffering and he will be with us. Humility to love, to suffering, and then to joy. How can we traverse that in one week? But we make it to joy. We each have to somehow make it to joy. And, and this isn't just the joy of a happy ending. It's a joy of a new beginning. And that's what joy does. It propels us into a new start, a new beginning. I pray this Holy Week you discover joy and a new beginning in your life. You know, as you were uh, inviting us into that reflection, it, it made me realize Though we talk about Jesus as this divine figure, what you've mentioned, and I think what Holy Week reminds us, is how human it is. But humanity at its fullness, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, from, from that idea of humility to that idea of joy, that, that's, that's human He's stuff. He's the very image of human fullness. I know we talk about him as <laughs> yeah. divine, right. of course, but he's the very yeah. image of the fullness and flourishing of yes. the human being. Yeah, and so for me, um, my hope for folks is that this week they encounter that Jesus. Yeah. In, in, in their day-to-day -day life as we walk together, that they encounter that humanity that's available to them. Yeah. You know, also as ministers, of course, we hope you actually take part in the services. Oh, for sure. But that's a lot of services. What is it like? <laughs> services. 10 services throughout the week. And, and so if you're not actually here or online, yeah. um, to, to bring the holiness of the week into your own heart in some way. That's right. So, so open, open your hearts this week because the divine life is, is with us. Let's go on this journey together. Amen.